It's hard to believe that the Cardboard Kid channel has been up for well over a year now. Since starting, I've reviewed over 40 games and posted some other game-related videos. Today, I wanted to give an update on all of the games I've reviewed in 2017. Fields of Green is the first game I ever reviewed, and my opinion hasn't changed. The card drafting and placement and engine building is challenging and fun. It's a great game. Paperback was sitting on our shelf for a while, but we played it again recently with all the variants. It was so good. I don't know why we weren't playing it, but we aren't going to make that mistake again. Adrenaline is amazing. The only thing that make it better is if there was more of it. More maps, more weapons, more everything. King of Tokyo is still pretty fun, and it only takes 15 minutes, so it's still a great failure when you don't have time for anything else. I would never, ever play this without the evolutions and costumes. It's kind of boring without them. Cauldron Cards was okay when I was five. After playing it, I don't know, a hundred times, we totally got our money's worth. We've donated this one to a friend of a friend. The Pursuit of Happiness base game is what I reviewed, and I said I liked it. Well, I love it with the friends, pets, events, and other additions. Codenames and Codenames pictures hit our table often, and we enjoy both games a lot. I still think I like Codenames a bit more than Codenames pictures. I haven't played Codenames Duet yet, but my parents like it a lot. I can't remember the last time I played the DC Comics deck building game. This has been sitting in the trade slash donate pile. The only reason we haven't gotten rid of it yet is because I've never played the Watchmen expansion. It's supposed to be good. Once I played that enough times to review, this game is gone. Flashpoint Fire Rescue hasn't been played in a while, and that's disappointing. It's really awesome. I think part of the problem is that there are so many things to sort through just to set this up. Getting all the expansions was our problem, not the games. I still think that this is one of the best family co-op games around. Galaxy Trucker also hasn't been played in a long time. When we played it recently, we were reminded on how fun it was. Racing for the best parts and figuring out where to put them is something I enjoy in other games. There is a lot of luck here, but I don't care. The game is so silly and everyone's laughing even when their own ship falls apart. Sorry Sliders is playing whenever we have only a little time to squeeze in a game. I guess that's saying something. It never gets played outside in those times. That's also saying something. It's not a bad game at all, but after a hundred or more plays, I'm a little tired of this game. Healthy Heart Hospital is also collecting dust on the trade slash donate pile. We haven't played it since my review, and I'm totally fine with that. Timeline Challenge is a good game that I'm not good at at all. Raptor is one of my favorite abstracts. I love how the ability and action points depend on the cards. The theme is awesome, and the asymmetry makes both sides interesting. Yinch isn't quite up there with my favorite abstracts, but it's excellent. When I was in grade one, I had more time after school to play two-player games. Now, not so much. In the evenings, we'd rather spend time as a family rather than have one person watch two of us play. I'm happy when it does hit our table, even if it isn't all that often. Merchants and Marauders isn't as enjoyable for my parents anymore, but I like it as much or even more than when I reviewed it. It's still one of my favorite games, and it's even better with the Seas of Glory expansion. Sushi Go hasn't been played since my review, because the game belongs to our friend, Ariel. I'm okay with not playing it, especially after discovering Cat Lady. Ariel got rid of her copy of Minecraft card game, 
which means I won't ever have the chance to play this one again, thankfully. Quarriers was also Ariel's, and she got rid of this one too. I thought it was okay when I reviewed it, but the more I thought about this, I think I only enjoyed it because beating Ariel was fun. Not Alone's creature is so cool. Playing as the hunted, at least for me, is not interesting anymore. My parents like playing as both, so a Game of Thrones, Hand of the King, might be my favorite non-abstract filler game. I said earlier that King of Tokyo is a good way to spend 15 minutes. This is even better. Delve has become really samey for me. Tile placement is one of my favorite mechanisms. And I love Dungeons and Dragons and other adventure games. At first, this game had a lot of things going for it. I played it 10 times and was still having fun. After that though, I think I realized those good parts don't come together to make a good game. Patrick is my favorite abstract. The puzzle of buying and fitting pieces and then deciding just how much to spend slash move puts this a bit ahead of Raptor. Tokaido is a good game, but one we donated because we knew we'd probably never play it again. It's a little simple for us. I still think it's an amazing introduction for new players interested in the hobby. Lovecraft Letter is quick-ish. The card abilities are neat too. Unfortunately, you're just reacting to what everyone else is doing. I will say that I've never played with the full group, and I'm sure it would be better than with just three players. Dice City has a great idea. But once I played Castle of Burgundy, even though they're pretty different, we never needed to play this one again. When I reviewed Race Formula 90, I was starting to play with most of the advanced rules. You may remember that I loved it. Well, now we play with all the advanced rules, and I love it even more. Unless we're teaching this to someone, I can't see us ever play with the easier rules. We may still do short races depending on time. Letter 29 is still sometimes play when I visit Grandma's. I think it's okay. No real change from my review. If this helps anyone watching, my Grandma still really likes it. So there you go. Hero Realms is good, but I'd rather spend the time playing something else. If I'm going to spend 45 minutes or more on a fantasy deck builder, it's going to be Aeon's End. And that's all the games I reviewed in 2017. I like some games more than I used to, and I like some games less than I used to. It happens. Drop me a line on Twitter at cardboard underscore kit, and let me know which games you've changed your thoughts on. Thanks for watching!